gather around Jesus' risen presence in word and sacrament. I just want to say a hearty thanks and kudos and appreciation once again to each and every one of you. And you know who you are. Each and every one of you who helped with the midweek Lenten service, the Ash Wednesday service, and the Monday, Thursday, Seder, and the Good Friday service. All of you, all of you, thank you for your part. Thank you for you. Please look at your bulletin for a moment for a couple of um, pointers about our service today. It, it, uh, we pretty much follow the order. And as tradition across the mainline uh, family of Christian churches, on festive Sunday, like Easter, we have what's called the Gospel Processional. And that is, is when a team of people, myself, uh, somebody holding up the book of the Gospels, a torch and a cross, we process into the middle of the congregation. And as the processional party goes past you, those of you in the front, you turn to face us. Because this is a way to picture Jesus' presence right in the midst of us. And so during the gospel acclamation, you'll stand, we'll sing that verse, we'll beat down in the middle. Again, those of you in the front will turn to face the processional party. And then after the gospel reading, we will uh, process back up. Those of you in front will turn back and face the altar. And all is good. Welcome to all of you who are visiting today. Welcome. And please know that you are welcome to participate in Holy Communion. Any of us and all of us who hear the Lord's call to come to uh, dine with him through wine and bread. You are welcome. The ushers will direct you in two continuous lines down the center. You'll take bread in the center. Our wine servers will pour wine into your cups, and then you put the cups in the two baskets you see, and then return by the side. Please stand as we continue, as we begin our service with thanksgiving for now.
Increase in our minds and hearts the prison life we share with Christ. And help us to grow as your people for the fullness of the eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Coulter, and I'm the Children, Youth, and Family Director here at St. Paul. And then this is a children's message. So if you're a kid, you're invited to come sit up front with me. And you can sit right here in front. <laughs> hey, how's everyone doing this morning? Good. Did you know today's a special day? It's Easter, that's right. <laughs> and what are some ways that we can tell that it's Easter by looking around the church? What do you, what do you see in the church that's special today? Colton? Okay, church. Met Margaret? Oh, that, cross. that cross, yeah. What color do we use to decorate the front today? Black. Nope, it's white. Yeah, it's white. And we use white on special days at church. What is, do you, can you think and try to remember another day in church where we decorate the church with white? Christmas, exactly. Those are like the two big days for church, right? We've got Christmas, Jesus is born, and then Easter. What's special about Easter? What do we celebrate today? Exactly, Colton, thank you. Yep, Jesus died and rose again. So today in the Bible, we're going to hear a story, and in the story, Jesus has died, and it's been a few days since Jesus has died. And they put Jesus' body into a tomb when he died. So some of Jesus' friends, the women, they went to go and find Jesus' body so they could anoint it and get it ready to be buried. But do you know what happened when they showed up? Well, the tomb was already open. There was a big stone that was blocking the entrance to the tomb. And when they showed up, the big stone had been rolled aside. So they were probably thinking, hmm, what's going on? And you know what? Jesus wasn't even in the tomb. Jesus had already risen again. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Jesus going to the tomb and then not being there, that is like the thing about being a Christian and going to church. Because, because of Jesus' rising again, we are forgiven for our sins. That, me that means that when we mess up, when we make mistakes, sometimes when we hurt other people or we hurt ourselves, that means that we are forgiven. That means we don't have to live in those mistakes. That means that we get to continue with our lives and try to do good things in our world. And did you know that God loves you very much? Did you know that? Did you all know that, that God loves you very much? Good. God loved us so much that God sent his son, and God, God's love is so big that even a tomb couldn't hold it. Even a tomb couldn't hold it. All right, today we are going to pray, and to pray you can repeat after me. After me. Dear God, Dear God we, love we love you. Thank you for loving us. Help us love our neighbors. Amen. Thank you all so much for being here. You can go sit back down. In chapter 10 of the book of Acts, the Apostle Peter responded to a request by an Italian centurion named Cornelius to come to his house and tell him about Jesus. What makes this encounter so salient that it is recorded in the Bible is that Cornelius was a Gentile. 
the, the uh, at the time, Jewish people would not even eat with Gentiles. The discrimination ran so deep that God sent an angel to Cornelius and gave Peter a vision so that they would come together despite the racial differences. Our reading today is the gospel or good news message that Peter gave to the crowd gathered at Cornelius's house. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went along, or how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Here, the Spirit is saying to the church, Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts, acts valiantly. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteousness may the, here the righteous may enter. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Like the first reading today, the second reading is also an encapsulation of the gospel or good news message about Jesus. This one by the Apostle Paul is written to the Christians in Corinth. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, 
which you in turn received, in which also you stand, though what, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I have proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe it vain. For I handed on to you as the, of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. According to John, the 20th chapter. Ladies, as you can see the screen, please join in the words of Mary and gentlemen, the words of the angels at the tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and said to them, Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The other two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrapping lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scriptures, that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, and one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, she said to them, She had said that she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, 
but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the, to the disciples, and she told them that Jesus had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. God's beloved people. He rose out of obscurity and made a tremendous impact on his nation. Crowds of people gathered wherever he was. They were gripped by the message he had brought, fascinated by the magic he seemed to wield, caught up in the excitement that he generated. The authorities, well, they felt threatened it seemed that all the old ways were now up for grabs. He was the reason for passionate family quarrels and divisions. Those devoted to him sensed a new era had begun. Well before he reached old age, he met a tragic death. His abused body was laid to rest. All the joy he had brought, all the release and the new life he promised came to a crashing end. Those closest to him were lost in grief, and so were so many others. But soon, reports began to circulate that he was alive again. People familiar with his appearances saw him in one place and then another. His appearances always took those witnesses by surprise. Now, who am I talking about? The one who is cause for such national controversy, whose life came to a terrible, pathetic end and is now reported alive again? Jesus of Nazareth? Oh, come on, don't be silly. How about Elvis Presley? <laughs> April Fool, they already knew. April Fool's a day early. <laughs> but really, friends, I don't think any of us then and now believe that any of those, you know, Elvis sightings had any basis in objective reality. But didn't Elvis's life and his supposed appearances have a similar effect on our nation's psyche? The way that Jesus did during his life on earth? Can we compare apples to apples here? Well, the answers are understood, friends, when we consider the Easter story itself 
and the impact that it had in the lives of those who encountered this risen Nazarene from Galilee. Consider this, friends. As far as anyone knows, there are no serious claims that the grave of Elvis is empty, and no one, well, maybe except the National Enquirer, had any re compelling reason to check. The tomb of Jesus, as we heard, was found empty by Peter, Mary, and the beloved disciple. To this day, neither friend nor foe has been able to produce the carpenter's body. Now, the disciples wanted to perpetuate a hoax that he was risen by stealing his body, as, by the way, read Matthew chapter 18 after you're done with your ham dinners, and you will learn that Caiaphas bribed the two Roman soldiers who fled after the resurrection happened. He bribed them to, dis to spread this very rumor that the disciples, yes, they stole the body. And if your Roman bosses find out, don't worry, we've got your back. And they were bribed very, very well. It's right there in the Bible. But that, if that, even that was true, that the disciples did actually try to steal the body, they faced some formidable challenges. First of all, they would have to get past the elite Roman battalion stationed at the tomb. They would have to break the imperial seal that locked the two-ton stone in front of Jesus' tomb. Breaking that seal was a capital crime constituting punishment punishment for both offender and guards by being burned at the stake and the fires being started with their own clothing. Now I can guarantee you no Roman bat battalion was going to allow that to happen. They would also have to roll away that huge gravestone away. Uh, friends, it is simply absurd to think that a group of scared, cowering disciples would suddenly become brash enough to take those steps. And for their part, if the Romans wanted to quash any rumors that he was indeed risen, all they would have to do is provide a crucified corpse, and Christianity as a religious force would have been nipped in the bud, which is, by the way, the storyline of this amazing film, Risen. Released in 2016, starring Joseph Fiennes, who plays a Roman tribute who seeks to find the body of Jesus and dispel the rumors that he had indeed risen, and he found out otherwise. I commend this to you. For your Easter viewing, it is one of the best. Point is, no one, no one, has ever been able to produce a body. Think about this. The Elvis that was cited, if you remember those reported sightings in shopping malls and restaurants, made no more than a subjective visual impression. The risen Jesus, however, he could be touched. We will learn last week, next week that he invited inspection of his wounds. He ate a piece of broiled fish in the presence of his students. Now, contrary to charges that, you know, these were hallucinations, Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 says that Jesus appeared to over 500 people at various times and in various places. Now, some of these 500 included burly, salty, tough, Fishermen. Now, I have worked with such up in Alaska. And I can tell you one thing. You cannot pull the wool over their eyes. Also, skeptics like Thomas. Hardened tax collectors like Matthew. Tax collectors do not hallucinate. 
He appeared to his disciples on 11 different occasions over six weeks, organizing and equipping them for mission. The Elvis who appears looks like a memory from the past. The Jesus who appears acts as a force for the future. Ponder this all the more, friends. The appearance of Elvis brings no gift of forgiveness. He was his own victim, as we, as we know so, so exhaustingly and excruciatingly even documented by docudramas, biographies, and so forth. The Christ who is risen submitted to the indignities heaped upon him. He endured every human sin represented by the characters in the passion story as a certain film so vividly illustrates for us. He was willing to endure the pain of rejection, the absolute horrors of Roman crucifixion and the unspeakable separation from God as he became sin for us. Dear people of God, he endured all that so that he could bridge divine forgiveness into our sinful lives. Appearing to his cowardly friends, he showed them where the Romans let him have it. He offered that gift of forgiveness and commanded them and you and I today by extension to pass that gift along. The disciples who fled and abandoned him and denied him when arrested, who are hiding understandably in fear of their own lives that they might be next, who even doubted the reports of Mary and the women who were the first to witness the risen, risen Jesus, they themselves, friends, were resurrected. They were transformed into fearless, outspoken witnesses who never stopped proclaiming, Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Until the day of their own death. Some even lost their lives in the same manner as the risen Lord did. Chuck Colson, remember him? From Watergate fame or Watergate infamy, depending upon your perspective. He says this. He says, I know the resurrection is a fact. And Watergate proved it to me. How? Because 12 men testified they had seen Jesus raised from the dead, and they proclaimed that truth for 40 years, never once denying it. Everyone was beaten, tortured, stoned, and imprisoned. They would not have endured that if it weren't true. Watergate it embroiled 12 of the most powerful men in the world, and they couldn't keep a lie for three weeks. You're telling me that 12 apostles could keep a lie for 40 years? Absolutely impossible. Michael Green says this, the church beginning from a handful of uneducated fishermen and tax collectors and zealots spread across the whole known world in the next 300 years. It is an amazing, peaceful revolution that has no parallel in history and continues today. Countless millions of people through the ages have experienced the risen Jesus. They consist of every color, race, language, tribe, and nation. They come from different economic, social, and intellectual backgrounds, yet they all unite in a common experience of the risen Jesus of Nazareth. It came about because Christians in every time and place has been willing to say to those who seek him, Jesus not only died for you, he is alive. You can meet and discover for yourselves the reality that we 
are talking about. Friends, the reality is this. Unlike those Elvis sightings, the resurrection of Jesus is no freakish, isolated incident, fodder fit for supermarket tabloids or online gossip. The resurrection of Jesus constituted the divine seal of acceptance and checkmark of approval upon the life, ministry, and sacrificial death of the one from Nazareth. The resurrection of Jesus, friends, declares that our separation from God, our alienation from each other, our world, and our subservience to death, it is over with. It is a done deal, friends. Overcome by the power of the love of God that knows no boundaries. So all this begs the question, why then stories about a, you know, sighted Elvis, who is by all accounts still dead and cannot help us? Well, because instinctively we all feel a need for a savior. If people don't meet Jesus through the good news that Christ is risen, risen if people don't witness the hope of the resurrection as it is lived out in the Christian community, as the Christian community is called to live it, or they refuse to respond, then people will look elsewhere some other kind of a savior, whether, you know, membership in another religious faith or a cult or create fantasies of dead celebrities come to life. Or, you know, here we go again, placing all of our Easter eggs in the election year basket. As one of my colleagues sardonically said, our presidential elections are every four-year referendum on who our next Messiah is going to be. Now, it is safe to say that each of us probably came to church this morning because we all hunger for precisely that. Significance and meaning in our lives, and deep down, yes, a Savior. My internship pastor told me that the reasons why people fill the churches on Christmas Eve and Easter, as we are this morning, it's because these are the two times of the year that the church makes her strongest proclamations that, first of all, Jesus is born, and second of all, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. People instinctively know this. And they fill worship spaces like this because we are hungry to hear more. A colleague says this, this way, in conclusion, friends, there is a Savior who offers us a real Easter experience. This Savior waits to meet us just as he met Mary at the empty tomb. The risen one is ready to meet us in scripture and sacrament, prayer and music, community and service. The risen one waits to meet us in the faces of those who love us and in the faces of those who need our love. The risen one waits to meet us in the texture of our lives, our dreams, our coincidences, really which are God incidences, let's be real, our trials and our joys. Dear people of God, forgiveness Transformation and a high purpose is what this risen Savior offers to you and to me. Embracing him as Mary wanted to embrace him brings to us nothing less than new resurrected life. We start to become what we in our best moments we can be. People of God, Jesus himself, not Elvis or anybody else, is our Easter experience. His resurrection is not an idle tale, a tabloid story, or story not even a bare-faced historical fact and the most documented and proved historical event in history because it is. It is a vibrant reality, friends. 
a force for the future, our future, because, sisters and brothers, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our song of the day. has made us God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. 
holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations. Free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. We pray especially for your children who are facing the terror of war, violence, trauma, and pain that are heavy on our hearts, and those in Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine. For the lives lost, families broken, the fear of not knowing, we pray for your peace and strength. We ask for wisdom and grace for leadership, but overall we pray for forgiveness, peace, and your hands to work in the hearts and lives of all in the Holy Land and in Ukraine. We trust you remain faithful and present, that in Christ all things are made new. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace. Liberating God. We pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity, health, and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. We pray especially for Matthew, son of Richard and Leela, and his family in Escondido, California, as Matthew undergoes serious treatment for reoccurring cancer. We pray for Dennis, Patrick, Jana Taylor, Steve Gerard, Joe and Sherry, Kate M, Peggy, Bill's sister-in-law Judy, Chuck's mom Evelyn and his sister-in-law Debbie, and for all who are struggling with influenza, COVID, or RSV. For who else and what else shall the people of St. Paul pray at this time? You are welcome to give voice to your prayer. God of grace, loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may truly serve and care for others. God of grace, eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death especially all whose ministry in the arts inspired generations to faith. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, from the tiniest seed to the widest ocean. On this most holy day, mountains kneel down in prayer, trees raise their branches in praise, rushing waters roar out their hallelujahs, and even the sunrise yields to the brilliant glory of your precious sun's rising. Join our prayers with all of creation that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through him who has made us forever an Easter people, Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Our worship continues with the offering.
Let us pray. Risen one, you, you call, call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. When Jesus gathered with his friends in an upper room to celebrate what would be the final Catholic meal. During the meal, he broke bread. And when he had broken it, he gave thanks, blessed it, and gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you to this, to remember me. During the Passover celebration, they remembered and celebrated so much God's deliverance of their ancestors from Egypt, the sufferings of all during the plague, the covenant at Mount Sinai, and the blood of the Lamb. Taking the third cup of redemption, he blessed it and gave it to them and said, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this to remember me. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray so that our prayers are fed and taught by that great teaching prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Hey! eat and drink and celebrate that Jesus lived for you, died for you, and is risen for you so we can walk in newness of life. Come, for all things are ready.
Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared the table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Jesus of unending joy, and God's ever active presence of Easter hope, bless you now and always. Amen. Amen.